Hey guys, Button25 here, playing FSX once again. Today, we will be flying a British Airways A380 from London Heathrow to Sydney Kingsford Smith International. Oh, that just fit perfectly. And let's just, uh, come on, right, just let me set everything up. In terms of autopilot, the engines are spooling themselves up, so they should be taking care of themselves. That shouldn't be a pro Just to be safe, I'm going to make sure they don't spool up while, while I'm just sitting here on the tarmac. Yeah, this is an over 20 hour flight. There's no direct flight from, Sid from Heathrow to Sydney or vice versa there. There's almost, uh, there is always a stopover. I'm not, I'm not sure where. So for example, Dubai is one of the one of the stopover points. Speed, we'll just take that back ten knots. Actually, no, we'll bring that up two knots, like, like twenty. Oh. Mm -hmm. I right, have altitude hold VR. Let's switch over to GPS. Yep, everything is set. Enable auto throttle as well. Right, strobe, wing, nav and logo. Have the nose and landing. Seat belts. So that's no smoking. There we go. Disable the parking brakes. Where's the runway? Right, so. Views. Ground handling. Okay, I'm going to. So we need to go back roughly one aircraft length. So I'm not sure what the length of an A3D is, but just set it up for around the uh, seventy meters. I'm not. That's probably incorrect, but. Then left turn. No. Well, I'm not sure how this will work. Maybe a bit less, maybe around eighty five degrees. And push back. Yep. Watch. Let's see brakes there. What's this taxi speed? So can I just set the thing to taxi at a fixed speed? Because that might be useful. Alright, yeah. Views. Alright, let's set takeoff flaps. Let's see if I set this all up correctly. I want to know which direction the aircraft will turn. Excuse me, which way is the aircraft turning? Or is it turning at all? It doesn't. I don't think it's turning. I could just greatly have misjudged the the distance. Wait, is it turning now? I do believe it might be actually turning now, but in the wrong direction. Right, stop the pushback. Let's. Let's turn and then we'll head off. Spoiler runs? No, no, yeah, I guess they're spoiler runs. Come on. There we go. 
Oh, sweet trance. It's a bloody big aircraft. Alright, so what we'll do... Wait, is this the short runway here, or is this the long runway? That's the long runway, so... We're going to go along that way. Okay. Now... Let... Enable taxi speed. Let's see what that does. If I look here, I'm still in full control of the engine, so I'm not sure what that really does. Or maybe it just activates brakes, preventing the aircraft from over speed from going faster than it's supposed to be. Or how will I get? Right now, I'm thinking is how I. I think I'm going to have to cross this runway to get to the end of this runway. Actually, no, it's actually, I think that end of the runway is actually closer than that end. Wait a second. I'm confused now. Top down. Oh, we're around halfway. So, but yeah, just, it will be easier to turn that way. Yeah, I believe this does not actually have the new terminal. Because I think that's... I think the new terminal is over here. Then again, you know, I wouldn't bet on it. Because they had to build an entirely new control tower. Right, turn this way. Come on. There we go. Oh yeah, this definitely has rear wheel steering. You can... Right, sloop. Because this aircraft is not designed to take turns that sharp. Come on. There we go. Please tell me I'm not just hallucinating, just... And that those, uh... The two furthermost back wheels actually do turn. Yes, they do! You can clearly see it here. <laughs> I'm not insane. Yet. Right. It's just after sunset, and I do On not taxiway! Want... On taxiway! Shut up, Meg. <laughs> Working that throttle, don't want to overspeed. Yeah, you can see that's where the sun is. Or was. This is what the actual weather is like in Heathrow at the moment. I really hope, um, we manage to take off between aircraft, so... Basically, I don't want to just be taking off and suddenly... A, suddenly an aircraft is bearing down on me. So there is a 737... Descending, but I think that's ascending onto another runway. I wonder if he'll have to make it. I wonder if he'll go around if I'm on the runway, but I'm not talking with ATC. Alright, I'll turn on the second taxiway. But it. I say depending on how you look at it, but it doesn't matter how you look at it. I think he's going for the other runway, so we should be fine. However, this shows I'm going completely against the flow of traffic, so... You know, this could cause prob... This would probably cause problems if an aircraft of this size was going against the flow of traffic. Yeah, and I think this will be the first time we actually give Kingsford Smith International Airport... Or an aircraft that will actually challenge the airport. Yes, yeah, so you can see those reversers on, on the inner two of the engines. Oh yeah, I said I'd turn on the previous taxiway, but yeah, you know what, I'm just going to use as much runway as I can. Turn, turn, beva turn. Approaching, zero, nine, right. right let's go. Start turning on to get aligned. And then we'll just power up those four Rolls Royce engines and off we go. Yep, there's a 737. On those runway flashing lights, zero, nine, right. Those flashing lights actually do bother me to an extent. That's just probably because of the contrast, really. But right, we're 
We're heading off down the runway. Engine's full power. 3.9 nautical miles. You just keep it. Keeping an eye on this. Let's perform some small turns. We want to use as much of the runway as possible before we take off. That air the aircraft is rotating by itself. I'm I'm I wasn't rotating. Right, positive rate. Gear up, flaps up. Now let's get speed hold. I have AP. Speed hold on. There we go. Gear up, and we are off to Australia. Now let's get this. No one knows. But yeah, and the pilot. Yeah, there's the Milky Way there. Yeah. Now the pilots are going to take a nap. So they're going to fall down those blinds. Oh no! I thought I could see through it a little bit. Yeah. Now let's close these back up. I guess we're gonna have the central comp. No. Wait. No. There. We're climbing smoothly out of Heathrow now. I did turn off the takeoff lights, yes. Now have no go wing strobe. Yeah, everything is good. I'm going to turn on the DIs because it could be useful. Yeah. Off we go. Let's check what air traffic there is. No no wide bodies, only narrow bodies. There's this orbit airlines. Another orbit airlines. Oh, orbit airlines is really popular here. CRJ dash. I wonder if there's any aircraft on approach. Yeah. That <laughs> why do you not just open the door? It's got a stairs. Oh, what is that? You know, there's no aircraft doing an interesting thing. Well, he's taxiing. Oh, is this the guy who just... Yeah, he's the guy who just landed. Yeah, some of the aircraft are buried. Uh, this guy's taxiing to take off, probably. There. Right, what is our altitude at the moment? 7,000 feet. Yeah, we're flying over London. You can see city there once again. There. London City Airport. But, yeah. Another minute and a half. Or well, 15 minutes and I'll pause the video and I'll s and, you know, I'll cut back in almost a day's time when we arrive at Sid or when we begin our descent into Sydney. And ten thousand feet. Right, let's get this set up. Landing lights off. That why is that Wait, that's the instrument panel light switch? And seat belts off because we are past ten thousand feet. The engines they aren't doing the best they can. Yeah, okay, we don't we don't need those warnings. It's probably just warnings that we're ascending too quickly. That just looks horrifying. <laughs> but yeah, British Airways, the national operator of A380s. They don't use them on a transatlantic route, though. Don't know why. You can click on them, but you can click on the FMC, but it doesn't do anything. And we'll slow down our rate of ascent as we are a fully laden aircraft. But yeah, I'm going to pause the video here. I'm Boston 25 and I will see you guys at Sydney.
Okay, guys, we're beginning our descent into Sydney's Kingsford Smith International Airport. We're going to begin by descending to 29,000 feet. The aircraft's a bit unstable at times. I will point that out. Alright, let's get this. There's that or there's just a lot of turbulence. You can see the ocean specific out there. Come on. Keep an eye on speed. This aircraft is getting buffed around quite a bit for an aircraft of that size. I'm kind of unnerved by that. Just look at the wings. How much they fluctuate. I really hope this isn't standard practice for all A380s. You can see the sun. The sun has just recently risen. That's Sydney there, so they should be down there shortly. What's that turn? Well, I'm just going to make sure we have the altimeter set correctly. Yeah, there is quite a lot of weird wind gusts here by... Just look at the aircraft, you can see the wings drop suddenly, the aircraft turns, occasionally it pitches up. Well, that's the nearest airport. YMDG. Never heard of it. Yeah, you can see occasionally the, text the textures glitch when you view from far away. Alright, it seems we could use a bit more, sp more speed brake extension. You can see Sydney is surrounded by mountains, by the looks of it, to an extent anyway. Yeah, you can... Why an RM? That's definitely a small field. Like, you know, I can't even see a proper runway. You know, there's not much. There's a Baron on the ground, King Air on the ground, Global Freightways Grand, grand Caravan in the flight, and Skyhawk around the Cherokee 180 in the air. So out of the nearest aircraft, only two are flying. Right, keep an eye on the altitude. We're about to level off and just go full, full speed brakes, spoilers, boom, oh, bastard, 210, it's sent to 21,000, acknowledge, come on, there we go, 21,000 feet, and reset the vertical speed to make sure we descend at the correct speed. Now let's get the spoilers extended. Because we are quite close to overspeeding. There we are. are very close to Sydney. We are almost at Kingsford Smith International. STD there. What does that sound for? Does that mean standard or something? Full spoilers. That's a lot of spoilers. That's a lot of spoiler area, really. Okay, I believe we can pull those in slightly. I mean, I don't want to cause the aircraft to stall. What is that? Huh, seems the world has ripped apart. I'm coming in as fast as I believe is safe. Yeah, 290, it's, it's staying pretty steady. Yeah, hopefully we'll get on the ground shortly. Do I hand up by any chance? No, nope, we're still descending. Sp Speedbird 236. Speedbird is, of course, the British Airways call sign for those of you who do not, who did not know that. Now you do know. As you can see, that's the tiller that controls the as yes, that controls the nose gear separately from the rudder. Alright, let's go full spoilers again. Okay. No, I don't need brightness. 
Bam. Unless this is different types. Okay, that I'm presuming is ILS. You're 75 miles northwest, turn right. Heading 145. Yeah, that's quite a bit difficult with the aircraft being buffeted around like this. Right, acknowledge sign approach. 145. There we go. We we'll approach runway 16 right. So that's the runway we took off from with the. Let's in the maintain 15,000. I'll acknowledge that shortly. I just need to get the thing set up. 15,000, negative 3,000 feet per minute. Yes, I copied here, just being a bit of a pain at the moment. Go. How are we doing in terms of speed? Turn left heading 110. Alright then. Acknowledge the instructions work. Coming in quite a bit wobbly. Okay, let's just open up map view and zoom out a bit and get close in to the airport. I want to see which runway is 16. Because if I'm correct, and it's that, it's one of these. There's a flight in over it. Where is it? Yeah, that is. So this is the, Yeah, that's the same runway we landed on at Concord as well. One one zero. there we go. That is actually basically the same as the GPS route. Speed 300. Zero, zero. All engines running normally. No, call it, no, what we call it's missed. So I'm presuming these are the, yeah, these are the Rolls Royce Trent engines. These are high bypass turbo fans because if you look at the back, you can see only that area, that central bit, is actually the jet. The rest is just kind of to cool the core, which is that, and to provide just a bit more thrust. They are more fu fuel efficient and quieter. Uh, Boeing test Boeing and McDonnell Douglas, I think, both had ultra high bypass jet engine test beds. Uh, one was a seven two seven. That was basically an unducted propeller, so it was still a jet engine. However, instead of having these large blades at the front, they had large blades powered by the exhaust at the rear. And an MD-80, or a modified MD-80, with one of these engines, flew across the Atlantic. You know, of course, no passengers to Farnborough. Because, of course, this was in the time of the oil crisis. So, of course, anything fuel-efficient was good. And I'm not going to actually retract the uh, spoilers. Come on. 5,000, 100, negative 3,000 feet per minute. And I'll keep an eye on uh, my my altitude because I will need to shortly turn on the landing lights and the fastened seat belt lights. But yeah, that will take another minute of descending to get to that altitude. That is a huge plane. Also, if you're interested in flying in on an A380, you should. And you know, regardless of airline, go on to iFlyA380.com, and then if you're going to fly on a route, check. You know, type in that route, and it'll show you. And it will kind of compare the best A380 prices for that route. Also, not sponsored. Wish I was sponsored. Send them in, sending to five thousand one hundred. Yeah, okay. Like he did, did this guy acknowledge me? Yep. Not to reset correctly. Aren't you is eleven thousand at the moment? Alright, yeah, I don't need to acknowledge anything. We are low enough. Last nose, no. Any rights? Yeah, we're almost at ten thousand, so. Ah, 
and where is it? There are seat belts on. Well, I'm just actually I'm just going to turn that off again just for a second. I don't know, no sound there. I was wondering maybe it would have a cool sound effect, but it doesn't. Now we're below ten thousand. Descending nominally. I mean, you know, Sydney, you sh Kingsford Smith is in that area. I've flown two Kingsford Smith, once not counting this. And that was with a Concorde, and I've flown from it once to Perth with a 717. Actually, I think that was my last video. My previous video. You can see the cockpit here is, lo is located lower. It's almost kind of. It's only slightly higher than the lower deck, I think. Because they, because if they had it up here, say, then that would make it difficult for the pilots to see the runway when they're when they're landing. So that's why it's kind of in that middle middle ground. I'm just sending quite quickly, but I just get this aircraft on the ground nice and smoothly, and hopefully we should be we should be done within the next ten twenty minutes, but hopefully within ten. And then we'll taxi to the gates. My SRI. I remember watching a documentary about the Airbus when it was first being. when it first entered service, really. It was interesting seeing them do the uh, gear drop test, you know, where they just use gravity to drop. For whatever. Hold on. Okay, now they do work. It, it just takes them a while. Okay. I was wondering if the gear failed. Please tell me the engines are spilling back. They're spilling. Okay, we are slowing down though, so that's fine. That's the nearest airport. I'm presuming that's a military base just by the looking, just by looking at it. If I would not bet. On it. Turn left heading ni zero nine or five. Ninety five. Acknowledge the instructions, and we are turning. Zoom in and I'm trying to figure out the location of Kingsford Smith. Right. Turn left heading 065. Hmm. I acknowledge, although I don't see why we need to be turning away from the airport. Coming in on 16 right. I think Kingsford Smith is in that area. Like that may be the airport there. Oh, this is the Cherokee. Oh, now there's considerably more traffic. No, we've got an Orbit Airline 737. No, air, no airport though. I've got the Cherokee I saw. To wait for that to load. The Pacifica 737 that I'm presuming has recently landed. A CRJ 700. An MD 83. Yeah, an interesting airport, I'll tell you that, but. Yeah, I think that's actually where we'll be landing. And Orbit Airlines aircraft taking off, a Grand Caravan, Skyhawk Cherokee, Cherokee Cherokee. Oh, Burns is also at Kingsford Smith, you can tell by its tower. Cherokee on the ground, a, a World Travel 737. This almost looks like it's an old livery. Not a taxi in King Air. Yep, yeah, that's everything. Alright. Now we're just waiting for the next instruction. I didn't say that. Go to map view. Yeah, that's one six so we'll that's what we'll do is I'm presuming fly out there and then turn. 
Or at least that's what's logical, but sometimes logic does not apply. 25 months. Third, turn right. Heading 125. Send and maintain 3000 feet. Go down to that negative 3000 feet per minute. Full spoilers and slow down to 140 knots. Well, I would, but I need to do some stuff. Tune Sydney Tower. Contact Sydney Tower. Inbound Eyeless Runway 16 right approach. Right, let's set flaps 1. That should only cause, you know, slight flap extension. Straight in. Right, acknowledge the pattern. Entry. In terms of altitude, how are we doing? Uh, right, we're at the altitude, so I can pull in the spoilers. I believe we can start extending the flaps further. Yeah, how are we doing? Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Gear down. Flap set to full. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the gear are down. You can see. Oh, that's cool. You only have like one half of the door that closes. I'm presuming that's for safety reasons. Probably more likely, you know, clearance because if you have those there, they can, you know, they could hit the ground. And they are quite fragile. I almost said flammable. Yeah, there is the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Sydney Opera House. And if I turn. Now that only. applies control to the. Uh, the thing. Right, I think we can turn to heading 150. So we're actually flying in more towards the airport. Yeah, that is the airport. So we are heading to... Wait, really? And then we just cut back to heading 140. Yeah, this is quite a bit of turning here, making sure the altimeter is calibrated properly. And that's the airport there, so that's what we're heading for. Full flaps. Everything is going well. I would point out more landmarks, but those are the only two landmarks off Sydney I know. So I'm sorry about that. There's a bloody great stadium there. Also, fun fact, Sydney is not in fact the capital of Australia, as most people think. I have no idea what the capital actually of Sydney, of Sydney, of Australia is. But, it is not Sydney. Alright, open up map view for a moment. Nope, still... Still not enough information for me to work with. What's that? Oh, that's gravity extent. If I just bring that up here. No. What's this? Oh, anti skid on. Auto brake bit. I don't know what that does, but I'm presuming. Oh, there is the airport. We're going for 1 6 right, which I have no clue where it is relative to that. I think it's going to be kind of roughly in line with that. So we're, we're flying in the right direction for the moment. So the, the crew is what they see. They're, sh they're loose side of the... That's actually quite a bit of visibility blocked out. I mean, that would block out that entire bridge. And that can also block out aircraft. It has happened that aircraft have collided due to not being able to see each other. Right, let's do a bit of a... Let's 
turn just for five degrees now. Do I miss a hand off or anything? No. Right, we've got a Piper inbound. I'm hoping he gets out of the way. I'm going to turn more towards the airport, and then once we get closer, I can manually do some more adjustments. All right, actually, now we're going to flip her back to 145. Yeah, no, 140. Actually, no, heading hold off altogether, and I'm going to take control. Yeah, hopefully that chair... Well, is that... Yeah, that Cherokee is approaching the same runway I am. And that could be a problem. That could, well, that could cause problems. Am I too high? Is that what that's saying? Turn. Zoom out. Turn. Off altitude hold. Because I'm... You know, this doesn't have that altitude indicator thing. Most airports do have. Alright, descend. Oh, just a bit more turning. Huh. Interesting choice for ailerons, Airbus. Yeah, the, the Cherokee should be on the ground by now. Yeah, I honestly have no idea if I'm at the right altitude, or if I'm too high, or if I'm too low. Well, I'm definitely not too low. Where's my descent rate? Oh, that doesn't really help much, does it? Yeah. I'm trying to get this camera lined up directly behind me. Right, level off here. I well, I said we'd be done within 10 minutes, so that's not quite working out. What's that there? What aircraft? Oh, it's a Cherokee. It's just Piper, but that's most likely a Cherokee. That's a bloody big plane. And those are bloody big wheels. I mean, that, not, those wheels are probably bigger than I am. And I'm quite tall. Right, we're clear to land runway. One six right. Oh, we just need to get aligned with that runway. We'll get down, I'll pop the reversers, and everything will be fine. Everything will be nice and touchy. Yeah, you can see some of this airport was made by a... was built on reclaimed land. Just to be safe, I'm going to descend a bit further, so I'd rather be coming in a bit too low than a bit too high. I honestly can't make sense of that. I'm pretty sure that is also an altitude indicator, a glide slope indicator, but I cannot figure it out. Close we we are quite close. So auto throttle was all oh, goes off. And I am now in full control. Which basically for the moment involves nose diving. Towards One thousand <laughs> That caught me off guard. Oh, I think I'm ascending, actually. I am correct, I am ascending. Well, there's only one solution to that problem. Slow down. Too high! Too high! Yep, yeah, that's what I'm trying to counter. Approaching! One, six, right! Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to give this a... Five hundred! Yep. Oh, yep. I gave the aircraft quite a kick. Right. Once again, not my best approach. Yep, definitely not my best approach. Approaching minimums. So that means minimums. There. Right. One hundred. Where? Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. 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 Oh yep. Yeah, turn a bit. We've got the reversers active. I'm just. Trying to stay on the runway. We've only touched down with the rearmost landing ears. Uh, and we are down safely. I believe at 80 knots you turn off the reversers. Also, that auto brake didn't do anything. 60 knots, turn that off. Yeah, that, that at least used a bit more runway. 
Let me just turn turn right here actually. Yeah, okay, that was not the best turn off, but yep. Contact ground on one two one decimal seven. Now we've cleared the runway, aircraft can land. And by the looks of it there they will be. Right, acknowledge the ground handoff. No. No. June Sydney ground. Wait, what? Request taxi to parking. Well, I guess that's it. Well, no. Nope, I'm just going to ignore that and find myself a gate. Authorized or not, I'm going to. I'm going to find myself a gate. Hold on a second. Alright, outside. Just quickly go into top down view. I'm looking at the gates to see if there if I can spot any large gates. But I can't spot any large gates, so. There's a piper there. Cherokee 180 about to land. I'm just going to park wherever. I'm going to park at one of those nearest gates. And the Cherokee's down. He hasn't popped in yet, but he is down. I should probably pull up the flaps because we don't need them. Because we won't be taking off for a while. Oh, he drifted off center. Small aircrafts have a tendency Approaching to Approaching zero seven. Yep, now I'm going to cross zero seven. I'm a rebel. Yeah, I just find myself a parking spot. And then park. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sometimes you need to turn like this with these larger aircraft. I'm going to go for the furthest one there because that's the one that appears to be equipped to handle larger aircraft like this I'm sorry for not taxing properly but at this point we're just trying to save time turn of course this aircraft's turning capability is not the best And slew into position. Hit the brakes. And let's power her down. There. Now should be should do two. Right, opening the doors. Didn't open the main door. Now let's just wait for all the engines to power down. I'll wait for the engines to spool down before I end the video. By waiting for them to spill down, I mean once you can see the control surfaces droop. And see what I mean when it happens. Eventually they won't go up like that, they'll just go down because there's no hydraulic pressure. Yep, you can see it happening there. See, even the rudder just kind of goes nope. You still have a bit of control, but not nearly to the degree of what I had before. So yeah, that was a flight from London to Sydney with a British Airways A380. I'm Bart M25. Goodbye.